Hello everybody and welcome back to The Second Shelf and to another video about Black History Month or related to Black History Month. If you follow my channel, you might have seen my Friday video, um, the Black History Month tag, book tag. Um, and one of the questions was about your favorite uh, book by an African author. So not African-American, but African author or African-born author. Um, and I picked a book then, you, you watch the tag, but I, I didn't pick a contemporary book. But I thought um, I have read uh, quite some books by African authors um, last year, the year before, and they were all uh, recent um, books, or let's say within the last five years or so, published within the last five years. And why not make a video about that? Yeah, I thought that was a good idea. So I have five books uh, from five different uh, African countries um, uh, that I really liked and that I want to recommend to you. And the first one and the first country uh, I invite you to travel to is Ethiopia. And uh, the author is Maza Mengiste and her book The Shadow King, which was published in 2019. And it's the second in... Um, her Ethiopian series, so to speak. Uh, the first one was The Lion's Gaze. That was her debut novel, uh, but they're standalone. So it's not, you know, it's not a series in, 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 the, in the sense you have fantasy series that the story will only be resolved after the 24th book. No, 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 they're standalones. And the one that I read last year and thought was absolutely brilliant was The Shadow King. Um, Maza Mengiste was born uh, in uh, Ethiopia, and this book is historical fiction. It's set um, beginning, uh, it, it begins in the 1930s, 1935-ish, um, when um, Mussolini's Italian army tries to recapture, as it were, uh, Ethiopia. Um, and we follow um, uh, one main character called Hirut, who is uh, uh, works as a, um, a maid in a quite well-to-do uh, household uh, in and, and a black household in in Ethiopia. And then the war starts, and her involvement and what she does in order to you know, become a heroine, so to speak. Uh, but she that's not the only perspective. There's also the perspective of the Italian side, if you will, a photographer who is what we now would call embedded into the Italian army and is tasked with uh, documenting um, the heroic Italian army. Um, these characters clash, of course. It's... it's um, the, the premise or the, the, the historical setting, I thought, was really interesting. That's what made me pick up the book in the first place. Uh, but it has also um, then really captivated me by the way it was written um, in this very... Um, yeah, it's not told in a straightforward from A to B plot line kind of way. Uh, so you have to be willing to just plunge into the book, give yourself over to the writing and the, the structure. But if you do, I think you will be really rewarded because I, I, I personally thought it was absolutely fantastic. It was uh, long listed or even short listed for the Booker Prize, but didn't win it. And I, I thought back then it should have won. It was the best book uh, of the whole uh, list. But anyway, Maza Mengiste, The Shadow King from Ethiopia. The second book um, is a book set in and written by uh, uh, an author from Liberia. That sentence didn't make sense at all. So we travel to Liberia and the author is Wayetu Moore who was born in Liberia and this is her debut novel published in 2019, She Would Be King. Um, it's again historical fiction but this time with a magical realism or magical twist. Uh, so there is some magic in the book. If that's not your thing, please be aware of that. Um, and the the book is about the very early history, the foundation of Liberia as one of the first free 
black states, so founded by freed black slaves back from who came from Jamaica or uh, the United States. And one of the main characters is Bessa, who has magical um, abilities, and that was the reason that she was cast out from her village and left to die, but she didn't die. And then there are two uh, male characters, uh, June and Norman, and they also have magical abilities. So the, the story is told from these various perspectives. Each of those characters, uh, they come together also, but each of those characters plays a certain role in the development, in the foundation of uh, Liberia. Um, I, you know, if you follow my channel, you know I'm not such a huge fan of magical realism or, you know, fantasy magic elements thrown in. But somehow in this story, it really worked. Um, and I loved to learn more about Liberia, a country I know very, very little about, um, the early days and how this, this whole idea, I, I knew that, this whole idea back then, um, that the, the slaves or freed slaves sh should just, you know, leave, uh, Western countries like the U.S. and go back to Africa and live there so that we are rid of them. Uh, so all, all this is kind of, integrated in the story but first and foremost it's just a really really captivating story about these three main characters uh, Bessa, uh, June Day uh, and Norman. So from Liberia, Vietu Moore, she would be king. The third country um, is Nigeria and the, I read quite some books from Nigerian authors, so that was the, the most difficult to pick um, because I th there were many that I really loved, and so I went with the ones that with the one that I read most recently, um, and that's also a 2018 release and a debut at that Oyin Gun Breathwhite, My Sister the Serial Killer. Uh, this book was also nominated, uh, I think, long listed for the Booker Prize. It didn't quite reach the audience. Um, I have a couple of booktube friends. Hi, <laughs> Doris. Hey, Doris. Uh, we love the book, but it, it's somehow it didn't pick up in the way I, I thought it should. Um, so it's set in contemporary uh, Nigeria, and we have uh, two sisters, uh, Ayola, who is very beautiful, and her not so beautiful uh, older sister, Koredi, uh, who works as a nurse. And Ayola is the serial killer in the title. That's probably all I want to reveal of the plot, but it's not a crime novel. Uh, it's really a satire on how women are treated in uh, modern uh, contemporary Nigeria, especially if they look good, if they are beautiful, um, and what women at some point might decide to do if they are just fed up with the way <laughs> they are treated. So I thought, it, it again, it was a, a really good story, the relationship between the sisters, uh, the serial killer element uh, is not, like I said, not crime fiction um, done in a way that it would be done in crime fiction. It's really a satirical tool to show us something about uh, society and how uh, the society treats women. So I, I thought it was not by any means um, uh, perfect. I mean, it's a debut. And besides, no book is perfect. But it was a really fresh take on feminism uh, and on the treatment of women. So I can highly, highly recommend uh, my sister, the serial serial killer from this new night for me, new and it was a debut, so new Nigerian author. The next country um, I want to feature or author from this country is Sambia, and the author is P Petina Gappa and her. Um, 2015 novel, The Book of Memory. Um, I read also her more recent book published in, I think, 2019, Out of Darkness, Shining Light, which was a historical fiction book about Livingston. And I liked it, but The Book of Memory, I yeah, I like better, but only on the second read. 
which is also a reason why I wanted to feature the book here, because sometimes you just have to give a book a second chance. Um, when I read it uh, the first time, I liked it, but it, I, it wasn't something that stood out for me. But when I reread it, I thought it was really, really good. So, yeah. And I will get into the reason why in a in a second. But first, I want to tell you what the book is about. Uh, the book is about memory. That's the name of our main character. And when the book opens, she is in her late 20s and she is in prison. Uh, she has been in prison not for that long, half a year or something. And she has been convicted of murdering um, a, a white man called Lloyd. Um, and she has been living with Lloyd. He was her guardian from nine uh, when she was nine until 18 and then she went off to study came back um, he was he died she was accused of his murder and she was convicted so that's the let's say the context of the book um, also important is that um, memory memory is an albino and she in her uh, uh, what she tells us is that she has been sold by her mother uh, or her parents, um, because they were both involved, to Lloyd when she was nine years old. That's the foundation, let's say, of her life story. Um, and my mistake the first time, and that's why I that, that that's something I want to point out. Don't go into the book with the sole purpose of finding out what happened to Lloyd. Did she or did she not kill him? And did her parents sell her and why. We will learn all that, but that's really not the main purpose to, of reading the book um, because the, the book is giving you so much more, especially about prison life. Um, um, uh, Bettina Gappa also uh, studied law, so she, she knows something about prison and you know, the criminal justice system. So the, we learn a lot about the prison guards, but also other inmates. And if you are just wanting to know what happened to Lloyd, you don't find that very interesting. And I think that was my mistake the first time around. And the second time around, I oh, because I knew what, what happened, I could focus on the richness of characters and stories that we learn also of a memory's background, her family, her mother in particular, uh, what happened uh, to her siblings. So there is really a lot there. And if if you only look at the, you know, I want to find out what happened to Lloyd, you miss a lot. So I hope I can conv could convince you to uh, try this one, The Book of Memory by Bettina Gappa from Zambia. And the last country is Zimbabwe. And yes, the countries were in alphabetical order because I'm a nerd and that's the way I function. And also the camera angle is different because the doorbell <laughs> went off and I had to get up and answer the doorbell. It's not important. What is important is that I can't pronounce the name, the, the adjective Zimbabwean. So I will just say an author from Zimbabwe. <laughs> because it's easier for me, and there's no violet Bulawayo, and yes, I looked down to at least get the author's name right, uh, and the book is called We Need New Names, and it's the oldest book in the list uh, on my list. It was published in 2013. The main protagonist is Darling, a teenage girl growing up in Zimbabwe, and yes, I know, I'm not a fan of uh, child protagonists or very young teenage protagonists, but this worked for me for various reasons that I want, don't want to go into because I don't want to spoil the story. But the way it was told, the structure of the book, it worked for me. Anyway, so it, the first part is set in Zimbabwe with Darling as our main protagonist and a group of friends who just try to get by and to survive. There is violence, there is unwanted pregnancy, there is abortion. It is not a feel-good tale, as you can imagine. And in the second part, Darling is able to escape, quote unquote, because she has an aunt in the U.S. and she moved to the U.S. to live there. But not all is well as an immigrant from Zimbabwe in the U.S., as you can imagine. I thought it was a really strong 
voice, a really strong story. I personally like the first part in Zimbabwe better than the second part, but that is really, I think, a very subject, subjective personal a preference of mine. Um, the 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 debut as a whole was really strong and well written, and it's an interesting, important story. So I can certainly recommend this both parts of the book. Anyway, these were five books from five uh, different African countries, from five different authors that I want to recommend it to you. I want to recommend it to you. I mean, wanted to recommend it to you. <laughs> Trying to make sense here. Um, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. As always, I'm looking forward to your comments and I'll see you all soon in the next one.